YouTube friends. Here I am Thursday and today's video is going to be quite different from the ones that have been posted in the previous few days. You may have noticed that they were quite short and they were just me out and about showing you the lambs and um, around the lake and so on. And that's because I made those usually towards the end of the day, but I've been really busy. <laughs> me and girl Rita, she over in Canada, me here, have been very, very busy working on some things that I can now tell you about. <laughs> so the I'm up in Pink HQ because this is where all the stuff for the shop is. And we've just done an update in the shop, Rita and I, of two things. Now, um, you may have watched the video of Kerry making the soap uh, way back and the soap uh, that I bought that she, I commissioned her to make for the last homely house, which was the shape of and the colours of Eileen's feathers. Well, we sold out of that soap, but I've got that soap back in stock again now. So if you're on the mailing list on the website, uh, you'll know that already because Girl Rita sent you um, um, an email to tell you about the update in the shop. It's exactly the same soap. It smells divine. It's got several different essential oils in it and it's got that lovely feather swirl and it's my soap. Uh, and so the only difference is that she wrapped this soap in this really beautiful sort of lilac-y blue. The previous soap was green. It's the same soap though. So we've just sent an email out to everyone who's on the mailing list. And it's a good idea to be on the mailing list because every now and then we do a prize draw and two people won the prize draw for the end of March. And I've sent one of those people's things out. So if you're the other person, Joyce, who's watching this and you got the email saying that you'd won the prize draw for the mailing list. Get in touch with me, please, uh, on that email, because I'd like to send you your little prize. I sent the other one. So it was back in the shop then uh, and um, a, a limited number of bars because, you know, she's a one woman show. She makes uh, a small amount of soap at a time, but she made this lot for me and they're in the shop now. Now, I haven't heard from Phil at the post office or more generally that postage isn't sending, isn't going to um, uh, wherever I send it to. However, I am worried <laughs> that possibly um, something may happen to the post. And so uh, I, at the moment, I'm, I'm not in any doubt that these things will get there. However, Girl Rita and I have been talking about and working on something for the shop that bypasses the post altogether and I'm going to write and I've written the first one and Rita's made it look beautiful uh some downloads uh, printable downloads that you can make download them and make for yourself so for the past few days I've been making the item for the first download writing the instructions that I hope will be clear. They are because Rita's then read them through and tweaked them and Rita's made it look beautiful. So it's a, a download. It's there in the shop now and it's for this. Well, this is my version. Yours will look completely different because the idea is that you take the instructions and you make a little paper mache shrine treasure box, display box. There's two different sorts. There's one with a round top and one with a pitched roof. And here we go. I covered this one all over with K facet fabric because I just, you know, had all these bits and pieces of scraps left over from various projects. This one, the round um, display box here, um, there's some, if you do the download, uh, it's, you'll see some images of these boxes filled with little treasures and treats. And this, I can't paint, save my life. So the back of this one is the, is a page from, uh, an old children's book I got from a charity shop that I cut in half so that it would fit. I show you how to put the shelf in and everything. And uh, I put, I, uh, and I stuck it top and bottom and then put some, um, just some pretty paper, wrapping paper, whatever. So that's what the download is for. So you don't obviously get these. You get the download with the instructions about how to make it. 
and you know we're all locked down we've all got glue we've all got cardboard and all the things you need, you need next to nothing just a lot of patience <laughs> so that's uh, what I wanted to tell you about today I've been making those boxes I made a few uh, just to get the so that I would be able to write the instructions really well and these uh, soaps are back in the shop now Okay, so that was the update I wanted to tell you about. But while I'm up in Pink HQ, I thought I would show you some of the other things that there are for sale here. Now, behind me, you can see the map here. Now, apart from the lockdown, the map, John has not pinned on the map for weeks and weeks. And it's not his fault. I mean, yeah, OK, he can't come now. But um, we got to the point where he was working he did this business course, which meant travelling away to Oxford uh, for weeks at a time. And when he came back from that, he was busy doing all the all the coursework. So we haven't really done much in the way of pinning videos. We still have the map, though, and I do love my big map. So while I'm in Pink HQ, this is, I absolutely love it up here. I really like it. It is a cat free zone, sadly. So you won't see any cats up here, but it's supposed to be a cat free zone because I don't want them lying all over the stuff that I, I'm uh, planning to wrap up and send to you guys. So speaking of cats, though, the first thing I'm going to show you is this is Kate's cat Norma. This is the little book I wrote about Norma. In fact, there's Kate's cat Sadie as well. So these little books then, these are little stories that I've written illustrated with my pictures all about things round and about here and so there are seven of them in total uh, there's one that's called the last homely house there's kate's cat norma kate's cat sadie this one's about a project that i did with a bunch of women doing some quilting there's bees there's eileen the goose and then a story another story there all these books then seven of them they are available in the shop, but I've also done them as a uh, I wrapped them in this lovely handmade um, Thai paper with flowers and in. I wrapped them in here, all seven in the bundle, and you get those at a reduced rate. So you can buy them one at a time or you can buy all seven at a time. So I'm going to show you all the things that there are in the shop at the moment, because apart from the two new items, there are a few things still uh, from, you know, that I carried over. So there are very few of Ted's candles left. These are the beeswax candles, a pair of hand-dipped beeswax candles. The smell in this, in this room, it's unbelievable. It's really, really great. Now, there are only a few of these left, and I won't be getting these again until Ted's making me some for the Christmas box, but that's not for months and months and months. We did a, a packs of six pairs of Ted's candles for spring, and I'm very happy to tell you that I'm working on collecting together six packs, six pairs of Ted's candles for the summer. They're not in the shops yet. <laughs> in the shops. They're not in the shops yet. They're not in the shop yet. But I'm putting all of that lot together soon and working with Ted to do that. So all the candles at the moment are just the few pairs of the of the beeswax candles that are left. I'll just sit here and smell them. Uh, and so the books, I've shown you the books. And then the other thing, this one will be a bit crackly. But we have some greetings cards and there are lots of different greetings cards. I'll show you this one first because this is five cards that are all the same this is the window uh, in my kitchen and so these are window cards they have envelopes with them and five car identical cards but in the other packs of cards these ones this is a pack i call home and this has got um pictures from around and about the last homely house this is a pack i call crafts and these are all things that I pictures that I've collected of crafts that I've made or beautiful collections of things um, around and about. This is a collection called Poultry and this is Professor McGonagall 
the year that she had little chicks. <laughs> and of course we know who that is. She's the one she has her own soap. And then if you enjoyed the sunset in last night's video, do you know that I saw the sun out of the window? Uh, there's one window that faces um, north in the house. It's small. And I was in the kitchen and I looked through and I thought, what's all that red out there? So I ran outside and, you know, I was about five minutes late because the sun had gone just below the horizon. So I'm going to keep an eye on the night sky, make sure that we get decent sunset. But this is the sun setting or rising. That's a sunset, in fact. But sometimes I've got some sun rises in here as well. And these are all taken around and about um, the lake and from the top of the hill. That one's taken from the top of the hill opposite uh, that one. And then flowers pictures of flowers uh, there are five different uh, flower pictures in there and then finally cats there's prudence sitting on the roof with a lot of blue sky and there's all four of them there the sisters rita and prudence norma and little sadie so those are in the shop as well and so if you're nipping over to have a look at the soap you might want to just have a check out of some of the other things as well and I ship on a Monday. Uh, it's working so really well at the moment. The way that I do it, because of the whole social distancing thing, I, I spend the, the time up here. In here, I've got all my envelopes are all ready. I've got my airmail stickers here. The customs notices on a roll here. I've got my return address on a stamp here. And then I've got my tape machine here. And I, uh, tissue paper, bubble wrap, uh, all the things that I need to uh, to pack up whatever um, is uh, has been ordered from the shop. And then I take it to Phil. Phil's back now, thankfully. I take it to Phil at the post office uh, in a big supermarket shopping bag. And I just leave it with him and come away again so i see him to say hello but i don't hang around <laughs> and he then processes it um uh, you know in the next day or two so sometimes the post is a little bit slower than we would like it to be but that's because phil is a one-man band he's just him uh because uh, of the of the way things are working at the post office at the moment and staff at the post office so there you are. I have been here and I have been wanting to do the videos for you about the um, look. I mean, I'm really enjoying going outside and looking at the natural world with you. It's getting me outside, uh, which is good because these these past few days where I've been working away, doing writing the instructions, making the samples and so on. Uh, I, I've been indoors the whole time, so it's been really nice around about five o'clock in the evening just to get out for a walk, for a walk around the dam, pop down to the lambing shed to see what's going on down there. Uh, it's been as busy today as it was yesterday with people taking lambs down to the field uh, uh, um, down by the river, about five miles. Yeah, so, hey, I've had the busiest um, few days, which has been excellent. And also today I finished my jigsaw. So I'm going to show you a picture of that as well, because I like to spend a few minutes uh, each day with my jigsaw. And I've been sort of rationing it because I love doing jigsaws. I've been rationing it out. Uh, and um, finally, I got all down to the bit where it's all the really tricky pieces that, you know, all the just the black pieces. We have to just try them all one at a time. So I've been really enjoying all the pictures that you're sharing of all the crafts that you're doing uh, over on the rather clumsy hashtag on Instagram. But I'll leave it down below in the description in case you miss it when I tell you. But it is Last Homey House Lime Green Sofa. So it's L-H-H-L-G-S. I know it's a clumsy hashtag, but if you follow that on Instagram, it's unique to us and you will find so many different creative projects that people are doing. So many. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And then 
down on the sofa because of course I've been hauling the sofa out with me when I've been going outside <laughs> mentally mentally so I've taken the sofa out and uh, stretched it around the dam but down there on the sofa there you all are and there in the comments down below there you all are and now on the hashtag LHHLGS once you know it once you know yeah you'll you'll be able to find it easily enough so I'm going to show you my jigsaw I'm going to um, have some supper I'm not sure what yesterday I made this really lovely thing that I used to make the children when they were little and John um, FaceTimed me and he said, Mum, how do you make that thing you used to make us when we were kids? And it's called Creamy Leek Crustade. And it's from a recipe book called the Cranks Recipe Book, which I no longer have, but the recipe's in my head. So I told John it and I thought, oh, it's years since I had that. I think I'll make that for me. So I had Creamy Leek Crustade. And it's very easy. You just um, chop a load of leeks up and you can put some mushrooms in as well if you like because I like leeks and mushrooms together I think they go really well chop a load of leeks up uh, sweat them all down with a little bit of butter in a thick bottomed pan then um, butter obviously and then if you mix in a little bit of plain flour and some milk and you make that into like a roux with the leeks and the mushrooms grinding of black pepper whatever else you like in there. Uh, those two things are enough though, the sauce and the leeks. And then if you've got something like a blender or a Nutribullet, I do it in my Nutribullet, a couple of slices of brown bread in the Nutribullet with a little grinding of pepper, a little bit of olive oil and breadcrumb, all of that. Then a sm I did a small dish because I was just making it for me. So in a small dish, put a half of the breadcrumb mix in the base and stick that in the oven while you're making the sauce and there's a when I was telling John this on FaceTime there's a really good reason for doing this if you just put the sauce on top of the breadcrumbs without toasting them off in the oven first it just ends up a big soggy mess the sauce and the breadcrumbs just go to, to sort of glue not good so toast off the breadcrumbs add the sauce and then top off with the other half of the breadcrumbs and stick it back in the oven again for another 15 minutes. And by which time all the sauce will have bubbled up a bit and made a nice crusty sort of crunchy topping. And you have that with salad and it's absolutely over the, out of this world. So I, I, it, it's years since I made it and John wanted to make it for Anna. And so now I made it for myself too, I made it last night. So guys, um, I'll get back. I'm not going to call this a taking care video. I'm going to call this something else completely, but we'll get back to some. I really like making those little videos. Somebody in the comments a few days ago said more than one person, in fact, said, stop watching the news, Kate. What can you do with that information? And, you know, that was really, really good advice because now I don't watch. I used to watch. There's a bulletin every day live from Downing Street. I used to watch it every day and then I used to watch the 10 o'clock news just to see if anything had changed, see what the latest numbers were and see what the latest instructions were. I haven't watched it for three days now. I feel completely wonderful about not watching that. I know it's all completely crazy out there and I've got a feeling that uh, we've come to the end of our first three weeks of lockdown and I've got a feeling we're going to cycle round into another three weeks. In fact, I know we are. So I'm going to stay locked down. I'm going to send you lots of love and I'm going to show you my finished jigsaw. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to download uh, the instructions for making this, I had a lot of fun making this and then I made the round topped version. I really enjoyed making them and um, so I hope you do too. Pop over to the shop. The link is always in the description below. I think last night I just wrote absolutely nothing to say, but tonight the link will be in the description below for the shop. 
for the hashtag for Instagram. And also, and I'm going to say, if you're still watching, I'm going to say this as well. This channel's ad free. And Re Girl Rita and I have talked about whether we should monetize or not. I don't like ads in videos. I really don't. I, it puts me right off when there are ads to skip or ads in the middle of a video. And so I kind of decided a lot when I started out that, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't have ads. I reserve the right to change my mind. But at the moment, it feels really important for me not to have ads. So this is freely given content then. And I feel then that the extra content that I do for the patrons over on Patreon is the uh, the effort I put into making that community there. Patreon now is amazing. It's amazing. We have different tiers. I do a monthly live stream once a month. I do a weekly video. And at the moment, I'm doing two because I'm reading as well. Uh, and once I finish reading this particular set of books, I'm going to find something else because I love reading. I have... Um, tangible rewards as well so Re girl rita and i make these um zines which are um well they're full of all sorts of interesting things that rita and i i write them i send all this copy to rita she makes them look fantastic this is last month's and I just, I love them all, but this is my favourite. I really love what she's done in here. So there is uh, an editorial. There's always something about the cats. I introduce you to someone I know in a page called Meet Kate's Mates. Uh, there's lots of colour. Uh, there's a, a section called This Month I Love. Uh, there's a, a tutorial. Uh, there's always something topical. This one, because it was last month, is all about the spring equinox. And then there's a puzzle as well. There's a um, there's a section called Bits at the Back. And then there's a thank you page where we feature one of the patrons who, who is at that level. And so a lot of work goes into this. This is my income. This is um, my passion, actually. I really enjoy doing it very much indeed. And then there's another reward here. I only have one of them here. And this one is last month's as well, because the pink cover from this one is echoed in the pink of the stories from the last Homely House kitchen. And this is uh, it's just um, some sort of anecdote or other. And my daughter Martha illustrates it. In fact, the illustrations for this one, I use them for my new compliments cards. So these I'm using these now. And so uh, if you buy any soap, you'll get one of these. And so these are the illustrations that Martha did for that particular edition of the stories from the last Homely House Kitchen. Now, you might look at them and think, oh, that's a lot of money. Um, you know, $40 for one of these, but it isn't because that person gets also gets um, the previous reward and the one before that and the one before that and the one before that. And what we're building over on Patreon is a really lovely parallel community, Last Homely House community. We've got our own Facebook page where people, you have to answer some devilishly hard questions, but there are people who are admins for that, who police that, you know, they, they manage that completely. I don't have anything to do with that at all, but it's where people can share uh, all sorts of crafts and tips and thoughts and ideas and support. So we've got our own closed Facebook group. And uh, I think that what we've got going on on Patreon, I love it. I absolutely love it. I really do. So I mentioning this in quite a bit of detail because making videos for YouTube, it's great, but it's not a hobby. It's my full time job. And I really, really enjoy connecting with you all. I really do. But, you know, just like you, I have to pay the bills as well. So ad free. Patreon, shop updates. It's all very good. I'll show you my jigsaw now.
And I'll just say this, it was very, very hard. And I absolutely loved every single piece. The very last piece I put in was Draco's shoulder, because that's all black and it's all the same. But isn't it great? I mean, if you're into the whole Harry Potter genre, like I am, then everyone is here. There's old Harry. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. And thanks for enduring the advert. And I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.